So I guess the next thing to look at would be what properties they have. The best way to, to look at properties, to know you have a good set of properties, is that you look at every single property over here, and each thing tells you something useful. You don't see duplicate information. You don't see redundant information. You don't see default information, auto-generated information. Or, you know, you should, everything, all the data that's associated with an object should have meaning and purpose. You should also follow the ISO standard where possible. So, for example, every single building has a fire rating property for walls. So there is an ISO standard of exactly where to put your fire rating property. So every time you see properties with a P set underscore prefix, that one is part of an ISO standard. Every time you don't see one, like this one or this one or this one, these are not part of the ISO standard. So if we just start with the ISO standard properties over here, you can see this P set underscore quantity takeoff, P set reinforcement bar, picture slab, and so on. This might not be too obvious, but these don't look quite right. And in fact, if I go to the building smart documentation, and I'll just browse the IC4X3 version over here, and I'll go to the listings of all the property sets. And if I search for P set, they have P set quantity takeoff. You can see it doesn't exist. So <laughs> this export, it's actually producing quantity property sets that pretend as though they're part of the ISO standard, but they're actually not. So this is this is very bad. <laughs> it's not good at all. Whereas if I search for this PSET reinforcement bar pitch of slab, there it is. So reinforcement bar pitch of slab does exist. I can find it and I can see the descriptions of what properties should exist. So for example, they've specified a description and a reference, and this is the description and a reference. And in fact, reference currently has been deprecated. And so you shouldn't be using reference anymore. And slab common is, is a standard one. You can see over here, slab common, which is, so that's good. They're using a standardized one to store load bearing, is external, pitch angle, and reference. Again, reference has been deprecated. We, we shouldn't be seeing that anymore. And then they have this thing, PSET VTOR, YTOR. Vitor, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the so, name of my company, by the way. <laughs> okay. The sponsor so, of these videos, of these models. Well, there we go. So, <laughs> Vitor, I'm sorry, but <laughs> don't do this, Vitor. <laughs> no, <Nah>, we, <laughs> we are just accepting this, man. <laughs> we are not doing this ourselves. Right. Like, we are the client so, in this case. Okay. So, uh, in this case, you know, it's okay to have your own custom properties. But you shouldn't pretend that it's part of the ISO standard. It just confuses people because people look it up and think that they should find certain things, but they don't. So in this case, correct approach would, for this to be named, I don't know, you could call this WeTor. And what is it storing? It looks like, I don't know, some sort of dimensions or something like that. So that's possibly a better name for this, for this property set. Now, I also see here are dimensions. In I see there's a differentiation between properties and quantities. And quantities refer to physical measurements or, or dimensions that you can get from the object. And the reason that the distinction is because the dimensions have a certain number of relationships that properties don't have. So dimensions, for example, will have a method of measurement, which you can refer to. And it will also have a way of parametrically linking those dimensions to things like quantity takeoff or construction scheduling. So it might seem like a subtle difference having a property versus a quantity, but it's actually pretty important from a computer's perspective. So this is actually the wrong place to put it. We're seeing this in the list of property sets, whereas we should see it in the list of quantity sets, which are a little bit further down over here. And in this case, there are actually no quantities available at all. And we'll, we'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on. We'll stick to properties for now. So we've covered the standardization of properties and property sets. Now it's time to look at in more detail about the quality of it. And you just glance at this and you can see there's floor, there's floor, 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 floor repeated 10 times. Again, text has been repeated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like it's just repeated <laughs> a whole bunch of times. And it's not because somebody has typed it out 10 times. No. They didn't mean to insert that data in 10 times. It's simply because they've just checked a button or something in the export, which has auto-generated a bunch of stuff. And 
I think as an industry, we need to have a little bit more care and discipline about this. I mean, you don't, you wouldn't trust an auto-generated drawing. You wouldn't do for constructing auto-generated drawings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be funny. Yeah. Yet, at least, maybe in the future, maybe sometime. In maybe the in the future. Correct, correct. But the maturity of our industry is just not there yet. I mean, and drawings are things we look at every single day. You know, in fact, I trust more auto-generated drawings than I would this, simply because people look at it, whereas no one is looking at this enough, and we should be looking at this more and, and questioning, what's mm -hmm. all this? So the proper way of doing it is that, you know, in every single project, there should be a document which clearly outlines every single property that should be provided. And there should be some that's, you know, specifically requested by a client, and there's some that professionals, we should be just delivering out of a I guess, a, a professional responsibility. Like, for example, I don't tell you, if I hire an architect, I don't tell the architect, please tag all the fire ratings of your walls <laughs> in, in your wall type schedule. I expect that to be something that you will deliver. And so similarly, I would expect that every single wall, like this wall, I would click on it and I would see a fire rating of it over here. I know this is a structural model and the structural guy m might not care about that information. It's the responsibility of one of those disciplines, the structural or the, or, the fire, or the architect, to take ownership over that property and ensure that it's propagated across the models correctly. Like for me, it's really baffling the way that how it is even possible that a software exports the same information repeated so many times. Like this is something wrong with the layout, with the way that the information is exported from the software. I might be wrong about this, but this is how I feel when I look at this. Absolutely. Yes. We, in Revit, there are some built-in properties, right? There's a built-in fire rating property. At the same time, you can also invent your own property. So if somebody wanted to, they could create their own property and call it my custom fire rating. Put all their fire ratings in there, but that's considered bad practice. And so Revit by default has made the smart decision to auto export the built-in fire rating property into the ISO standard fire rating location. And that's great. But the problem is, is that a lot of people in our industry don't put data in the right location. Mm -hmm. So even though there's, there are good intentions behind many of the vendors, the data comes out looking like a mess. In fact, just so easy to hit a checkbox and just say, dump all the properties out. But if you take a, a look at all the properties in your average BIM project, like what percentage of those properties can you actually trust? Which ones have been vetted? Which ones do you produce documentation for? Which ones are outdated? Which ones are just thrown in there because somebody downloaded a family from the internet? We have to start curating this. And here we have an example of default values, like roughness. No one ever entered that, I guarantee you. No one entered that roughness value. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's just coming out because that's what the exporter said. I mean, these are easily solved. We just have to... Like, Be aware about it. it. Yeah. Exactly. You just need to set up proper mappings and export settings and mm. get the right things out. True. So I think another important piece to look at for properties is whether your properties are defined under the occurrence or the type. So IFC has the concept of inheriting properties. The idea is that if a wall type has a fire rating of X, then by default, which is common sense, that's how our industry works, then all walls of that wall type will have this fire rating as well. And maybe in one or two spots, due to, a, I don't know, a particular construction detail, that, that wall fire rating might be overridden. And that's okay. That's just how our industry works. But you'd assume that the properties on the type automatically are inherited by the occurrence of that type. And when you look at the property sets, make sure your ISC viewer shows you not just the property sets of this object, but those that are inherited by the type. And here's very interesting. Here are all the inherited property sets of the wall type. And if I just jump to the wall type for a moment, so I'm no longer selecting this. It's gone dark orange. I'm looking at the wall type object, not this individual wall. And here are the mm -hmm. properties on it. And these are pretty meaningless properties. The only one which seems to have meaning here in English is external, false. And sometimes that's how projects might work. They might actually say this is an external wall type versus this is an internal wall type. Not the case in this project, I'd say. For example, this one, it says, is external false? Yes, this is a internal. internal. So yeah. That's correct, is external false. But what if I click this one? And if I scroll down, well, it says the same thing. You know, it's just not information I can trust. And again, this is not the fault of a vendor. It's, it's purely just something we need to pay a lot more attention to as an industry. Yes, I agree. So similarly over here, 
what about this small thing? So this is not a slab. It calls itself a slab, but it's definitely not a slab. It's a insulation. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, wrong categorized. Yeah, and I think this is a something to note about choosing the right category. The importance about choosing the right category is not just about calling your walls walls. It's because different object classes have different properties that can be assigned to it mm -hmm. and different uh, methods of measurement for their quantities. So it's really critical to assign things the right thing so that you get the right properties out. So in this case, you're seeing we're getting a whole bunch of slab related data for this thing, which is definitely not a slab. So that's not very good. That's okay. I keep going on. It's also good to take a look at just simple things like the, the naming of, of properties, the consistency. So suddenly having things as uppercase, no, it doesn't follow the, the, the convention used elsewhere. Stick to a convention. You know, switching between things with spaces versus the, the kind of namespace prefix with this kind of capitalized underscore. Yeah, yeah just, just keep the convention. It's just good to be neat with your data. It's just part of a discipline. I mean, it's like an architect pays attention to the line weights of their drawings. Similarly, when you're looking at data in a BIM database, these things matter. We will also assume that the data types are correct. Like, for example, this is a text. Oops, sorry. We'll just click somewhere else, maybe. Oh, of course, because I don't have the actual. I'm not, I'm not on the type. So if I click on one of these, oops. So here we can see that this is a text type. And these are number types. If they existed, they're null. So if we go over here, Actually, we'll go to a custom one that you have. Yeah. Here's custom. Yeah. So we expect this to be text. We expect this not just to be a number. We actually are also expect it to be having the right unit, uh, whether it's a, a length, an area, or a volume. So these ones, at the very least, they are the correct base type. So it's important not to put things as text where they should be numbers or text where they should be mm -hmm. booleans or things like that. In an IFC, it's important not to just have, this is a number, but this is a length, this is an area, this is a pressure value, you know, this is a, a temperature value, or for example, something like that. There's no way of currently viewing that in the Blender BIM interface right now. Uh, maybe that's a feature we need to build, which shows the units next to it, for example. That would be cool, and I agree. That, yeah, that, that would be a nice little feature. We should build that. 